Believe it or not, we're a quarter of the way through 2022. And if three months ago I would have told you we would have a war on the other side of the world that would escalate to disastrous proportions and cause tremendous humanitarian distress, you wouldn't have believed me. And if I would have told you we'd once again have 100-year floods that would affect large parts of the east coast of Australia, it would have been hard to believe. And what if I told you at the beginning of the year that we'd be experiencing thousands and thousands of new cases of coronavirus every day, but life would get on normally. However, despite all this, our housing markets have remained robust and resilient, so now's a good time to look back at the first three months of the year and see how our housing markets are performing. So, who better to discuss this with than Australia's leading housing economist, Dr Andrew Wilson, Chief Economist of My Housing Market. Hi, Andrew. Uh, hello, Michael, and we are at the end of the first quarter of the year. It's uh, gone rushed by, us, but uh, nonetheless, it gives, it gives us a very clear handle of uh, of where we are in terms of our housing markets now. And I don't think there's a lot of surprises, but we do have the latest My Housing Market data on, uh, on house price movements over the first quarter, and they're certainly showing uh, a mixed bag, but we have seen those, uh, I guess, that two-speed housing market emerge over the last six months or so. Well, obviously, last year we had a once-in-a-generation property boom where our property markets were going gangbusters, but things are a little bit different this year, Andrew. Well, it's certainly different from Melbourne and Sydney, Michael, and we know that those markets have been easing over the past six months from what were absolutely extraordinary results in 2021. Affordability barriers have raised their ugly head, I suppose we could say, with those high prices, but that's a good thing. Melbourne and uh, Sydney markets are consolidating and prices growth has certainly eased. We've reported price growth in Sydney of 1% over the March quarter, uh, and in Melbourne, uh, a little lower at 0.2 of a percent. The median House price in Sydney is still well over 1.5 million. We know that the Melbourne and Sydney markets have been losing energy or price growth. The trend has been downwards over the past six months from what have been remarkably high results. But uh, the March quarter results are the lowest for both Melbourne and Sydney since the June quarter 2020, Michael. And of course, that's when markets were severely affected by the uh, the lockdowns in uh, as a result of COVID. But so. no surprises there that we've had an easing in growth levels over the March quarter in Melbourne and Sydney. The trends have clearly been showing uh, a declining uh, growth factor for those housing markets. And uh, it, it is a response to those high prices just starting to sideline some buyers. But more particularly, it means that uh, buyers just can't bid up property at the rates they have been because interest rates and incomes are flat but sales volumes are still holding up in most markets. The offset to all that of that two-speed environment, Adelaide and Brisbane markets are still red hot, particularly that Brisbane market up 5.4% over the March quarter, a little bit less than uh, the previous quarter. It's starting to ease, but of course, uh, double figure per quarter growth rates are unsustainable. And that Brisbane market now has a median over $800,000. The median house price up by over 30% in Brisbane over the past year, Michael. Adelaide similarly had a strong result over the March quarter, up by 3.4%, uh, annual growth rate of 26.2%. And the median there is around 760 thousand dollars so certainly a tale of two market energies when we compare those four major markets the Perth market had also had quite a reasonable result over the March quarter Michael of course it's been a clear underperformer over the last few years for various reasons but it was up by 2.2 percent over the quarter up by 13.8 percent over the year with a median of just under six hundred and fifty thousand dollars uh, mixed results for the smaller markets uh, although all the smaller markets did record positive positive growth with Hobart up by 30% over the year and Canberra up by over 25%. But the Canberra market is also starting to ease after what was a very strong year last year. And again, it's those affordability constraints. So uh, nothing too surprising, Michael, I think in the March quarter results. And we know that there have been some challenges this year, particularly for the Sydney and Melbourne markets. Early on, there were issues over COVID. And of course, we've had floods in Sydney and the floods uh, have also perhaps impacted uh, the Brisbane result, which is lower, although still very strong compared to the December quarter. So our housing markets are still growing, but nothing like last year. But what's happening to our rental markets at present? We're still seeing uh, vacancy rates tighten for both houses and units. And quite remarkably, those uh, areas where we did have a, 
a, a perceived oversupply of rental stock. That's the CBD markets in uh, Melbourne and inner city uh, suburbs in Sydney uh, in terms of unit vacancies. They are starting to decline quite sharply. But across the board, we're seeing continued strong increases uh, in rents, particularly for houses. House rents are now up uh, across the board by over 10% uh, over the past year in most capital city markets. And uh, we're now starting to see that increases in rents transfer to the uh, unit market as well. We really are running out of rental stock. And the offset to that, of course, is strong demand for available properties, which is continuing to push rents up quite strongly. So it's not a good news story for tenants out there, Michael, and uh, really no relief in sight for that shortage of rental accommodation, particularly given that we're uh, on the verge of reintroducing mass migration, and that'll mean uh, increased demand with an already undersupplied market. And sadly for tenants, that will again translate into higher rents. Well, higher rents, higher deposits required to get into the housing market are going to put some tightening in the first home sector as well, isn't it? The first home buyer numbers, as we've discussed, are still holding up generally. But I think that's a lot of that intergenerational wealth uh, shifting that's going on. The bank of mum and dad are keeping those first home buyers in the marketplace. But uh, I think it's going to get uh, harder and harder, even for the bank of mum and dad, to uh, to keep first home buyers active. Well, the markets have been strong in the first three months of the year. April's a funny month, though, isn't it, with holidays? And then there's going to be a budget and elections coming up. There may be just a little pause coming up. Yes, I don't think we'll get clear air really until the middle of the year, Michael, and I would suggest we'll have a lengthy election campaign. Um, so really, it won't be until the end of May until the dust settles. And then, of course, we'll be moving into the typically quieter winter housing market. Well, it's been a fascinating first three months, so it'll be interesting to see how our housing markets perform for the rest of 2022. I look forward to catching up with you each week for these Property Insider Chats. 